Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Simon Cook from the Tohoku Institute of Technology and together with my co-presenters Adrian Lees from Miyagi University of Education and Akihiko Tohei of Sakura no Seibo Junior College, we will be guiding you through this presentation. So please sit back and enjoy. Unfortunately, being in Japan, we are unable to join you in any live context for question and answers. But we would welcome any questions or comments directed at our contact addresses, which will be given at the end of this presentation. Our presentation today looks at the results of a study of mobile phones on student autonomy. In our study, we created and conducted a questionnaire to learn the amount of study time, motivation and opinions related to using mobile phones for educational purposes of 181 students who participated in classes in which the teachers either encouraged the use of mobile phones through certain activities or prohibited their use. We will be discussing the results which indicated that students in classes in which mobile phones use was allowed tended to study significantly more than students in classes in which the use of mobile phones was prohibited. We will also be showing feedback from students which suggests that using mobile phones during and outside of classroom time can bring many benefits to the language class. Our presentation will proceed in the following order. So let us begin. Smartphone usage grew by 81% in 2012, and the amount of mobile traffic last year was 12 times as much as the entire internet in 2000. By the end of 2013, the number of mobile connected devices was expected to exceed the population of the entire world. There is now an abundance of applications ranging from simple games and learning activities to complex school textbooks that can be downloaded onto a smartphone at the push of a button. The challenge for teachers is to create an environment in which students feel comfortable using these devices for educational purposes. We will now report on our attempt at this and the advantages this tool brought to our respective EFL classrooms in our students' study habits. The background for this study started in 2012 when Lise attempted to look at whether Japanese high school students were autonomous in their English studies or not. I defined an autonomous student as one who not only had high motivation, but also displayed high metacognitive skills. That is, students who took charge of their own learning, reflecting upon their own study habits and thinking of ways of to become better learners. In this paper, 353 teenage participants indicated low signs of autonomy, with few being put into the upper right bracket of this figure. Therefore, it was concluded that teaching methods need to be discussed that would increase the autonomous behavior of students in their language learning. This reflects the importance of intrinsic motivation. As has been mentioned, this research set out to examine the benefits that mobile phones might have in the classroom. Students were given some reign to act autonomously in their accessing of the applications both outside and inside the classroom. It is important not to conflate autonomy with self-instruction or individualization, whereby learners can determine their own needs and act upon these needs independently. Rather, through studies such as Kohonen's experiential model, autonomy is more generally conceptualized as an interdependent model, incorporating the student, the institution and the teachers within it, allowing possibilities for students to explore avenues of self-regulation in learning, both inside and outside the classroom. Self-determination theory, a theory which has been used to explain learning motivation, such as in the studies in DC and Ryan's 2002 Handbook of Self-Determination Research, underlines the importance and the relationship between personal control 
and autonomy, and high quality engagement in learning through the establishment of socio-environmental conditions which help foster this learning mindset. One way we discussed of increasing the intrinsic motivation of students and their use of metacognitive skills, leading them to become more autonomous in their learning, was the use of technology. Children and teenagers seem to be attracted by the vast possibilities made available through the internet. In an investigation conducted by Least in 2011, however, it was found that although teachers saw technology as a useful tool in education, many commented that using it was time-consuming, especially when preparing for classes. Male teachers aged between 31 and 40 showed the most positive attitude towards using technology. This may have been due to their being at the perfect age with sufficient experience at the times of revolutionary changes in computer technology, such as Windows 95 and Windows XP. It was concluded that more research is needed to find ways for teachers to use technology in the classroom with ease and confidence. The cell phones in the classroom movement has its roots in the American educational system. However, in the early 1990s, most schools banned electronic devices, such as cell phones and pagers, because of their tendency to be associated with drug dealing or gang activity. After two tragic events occurred in the United States, parents wanted to be able to communicate with their children at any time. They argued that cell phones were necessary for safety, and the ban was relaxed in many schools. In the mid-2000s, cell phone use increased within families, and new teachers who spent their teenage years texting brought that practice into their classrooms. In the coming years, great changes in practice and policy swept through schools. According to the Pew Research Center, 73% of American teachers and students now use cell phones for classroom activities and to complete assignments. However, this educational movement was not as readily embraced in Japan. As recently as December 2008, 99% of Japanese public middle schools prohibited students from taking cell phones to school. This ban did not decrease the number of cell phone users among students. 46% of junior high school students reported owning a cell phone, and the percentage jumped to a staggering 96% for high school students. 90% of high school students gave their email address to new friends, and 66% of students sent more than 10 text messages a day. Educators in Japan noticed this trend and attempted to incorporate cell phones into their classes. One example is Kazuhiro Fujiwara and his Yono Nakaka, or How the World Works. It is Fujiwara's hope that this kind of active lesson will become the standard of Japanese classrooms in the future, one that promotes communication among students and the ability to edit information rather than just process it. Previous research has also shown that using cell phones for educational purposes in an EFL environment brings many advantages to language learners. Liu showed that students who learned vocabulary through texting on their cell phones were able to achieve significantly higher scores than those who studied using the traditional paper method. Ando and Morimoto used in-class email to chart student attendance and to display student opinions, thus saving valuable learning time. And Ono and Ishihara concluded that using an iPod Touch in class improves students' listening and writing skills. Today's smartphone is a descendant of the Personal Digital Assistant, or PDA, which itself, it could be argued, is a descendant of the Lowly Diary, or Appointment Book. What can be said certainly for these earlier incarnations is that they are, or were, primarily for personal use, to be consulted and annotated in private. So what of the smartphone? 
Stockwell, in his 2008 work, and some of the participants in Wang and Smith's 2013 study, argued that by bringing the smartphone to class for use in prescriptive activities can be considered an invasion of private space or personal territory. As both Wang and Smith and Ushioda comment, the extent to which a level of acceptance can be fostered of the use of smartphones in educational contexts depends largely on the effectiveness of the explanation by the teacher of the benefits to using smartphones and appropriate learning applications. In our research, we hope to answer the following research questions. This study was conducted at four separate private and public universities in northeastern Japan. There were a total of 181 subjects in the sample, with 113 being female and 68 male. The average age of the participants was just under 19, and they indicated that they spent an average of about 123 minutes each week studying English outside of their regular class time. Students perceived their own English proficiency to be, on average, 2.29 or lower intermediate, on a scale of 1, beginner, to 5, upper advanced. Although all the participants had a mobile phone, 7 indicated that they could not access the internet using it. Students ranked their ability to use a mobile phone on a scale of 1, basic, to 4, advanced, at 1.86 suggesting the majority was able to download applications from the Internet onto their mobile phone, a skill necessary for participation in the classes conducted for this research. We used mobile phones in three main ways throughout this study. First, the video function was made use of during students' role plays. When students were practicing their role plays, we had them video record themselves using their mobile phones. When they had finished recording, they reflected on their performance watching the video, allowing them to make a more accurate assessment of their language and communication skills. This seemed to encourage the use of metacognitive skills in students. Second, using the free dictation application, Dragon Dictation, students were able to clearly see the words they had spoken on the screen in front of them. Again, with accurate and instant feedback, this encouraged the use of metacognitive skills as students were considering ways to improve their pronunciation and language skills. Third, using the video conferencing application Skype, students held a video chat with university students in Korea. The students enjoyed these conversations a lot, which were done completely in English. After this activity, some connected with the students from Korea through social networking systems. This activity aimed at increasing the intrinsic motivation of students as English was used in an enjoyable, authentic situation in which students could see the importance of using English for communication. To measure the effects of using mobile phones in class, we used a questionnaire. The items were categorized and each category was measured using a Cronbach's Alpha Reliability Scale. The category of Intrinsic Motivation was deemed too low at 0.588 and therefore item 6 was removed from the analysis. This slide displays the process of the present study. Once the questionnaires were completed, the data were analyzed using a one-way analysis of variance, that is ANOVA, with 95% confidence intervals and effect sizes also being reported. The first research question asks whether students in classes in which mobile phones were used, that is the experiment group, tended to study more than students in classes in which they were not used. A one-way ANOVA suggested that the experiment group studied more than two hours a week, statistically significant more than the control group, with medium effect sizes. This suggests that the use of mobile phones is effective in encouraging autonomy. 
However, it could be argued that this is in fact due to students having a higher motivation to study English rather than the use of mobile phones. The second research question looks at whether the students' study habits are a result of being more highly motivated or due to the use of mobile phones in class. A one-way ANOVA suggests that there was no significant difference in the intrinsic motivation to study English between the two groups. Furthermore, the experiment group showed significantly more positive attitudes towards using mobile phones in class than the control group, with medium effect sizes. This suggests that it was the use of mobile phones, not the motivation of students, that resulted in the difference in the amount of study students did in their own time. These next two slides show students' comments regarding the use of mobile phones in the classroom. This first slide shows students' reactions to using the application. As you can see, the students' comments were overwhelmingly positive. This slide shows students' comments regarding the use of mobile devices in the classroom. While mostly positive, the last comment on this slide shows how attention should be paid to the prevalence or lack of it of smartphones in the class when or if assigning tasks for classwork and or homework requiring their use. Admittedly, our research was not without its weaknesses. Because no pretest was conducted at the beginning of the course, we cannot be entirely sure that differences in the amount of study time was indeed due to the use of mobile phones. There is a possibility that students in the experimental group may have already been studying more than the control group. In future studies, we will be able to gain a deeper insight to the effects of using mobile phones in class by including a pretest and post-test in the research project. Also, the experiment group and control groups were rather unbalanced. Having better balanced groups may bring stronger reliability to the statistical data to support our proposal that the use of mobile phones is beneficial for learning EFL. Despite these weaknesses, we feel there is strong evidence in both the statistics gathered and in the students' feedback to support previous research that using mobile phones for educational purposes in an EFL environment does in fact bring many advantages to language learners, and that the introduction of an autonomous element into students' language learning appears to promote internal driven forms of motivation. We believe that further research will enable us to strengthen these arguments, bringing clear evidence that mobile phones should not be hidden in students' bags or under the desk, but used in ways that will encourage more effective learning both in and outside the classroom. This slide shows the items used in the questionnaire for which students were asked to rank using the scale at the top of the page. In addition to general questions relating to smartphone use, the questions were designed to uncover students' patterns of motivation and autonomy in learning English. The questions were all translated into Japanese for ease of understanding. This slide shows the open-ended questions used in the questionnaire. This slide is our references slide. This final slide has our contact information. As I mentioned in our introduction, should you wish to contact us regarding any facet of this presentation, please do not hesitate to email us with your comments or questions. Many thanks for watching our presentation today. Our thanks also go out to the organisers of the symposium and in particular to Kate Borthwick and Sue Nash for their help and support. We hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.